I'm Brigadier General Joel Safranik, the Director for Air Force Security Assistance and Cooperation, otherwise known as AFSAC. My team looks forward to spending time with our industry partners at the end of July. At AFSAC, the relationships we build with our international partners serves as the cornerstone to a safer world. As we have witnessed in recent years, our allies and partners rally when threatened around the world. In line with that purpose, the AFSAC mission is to deliver air, space, and cyberspace capabilities to strengthen international partnerships and advance national security. The AFSAC team is all in with our partner nations around the world as we strive to become the trusted air, space, and cyberspace power for each of our 100 international partners. We operate in a very complex foreign military sales ecosystem, as depicted by this chart. As the AFSAC director, I report to the commander of the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center, but I'm also dual-hatted as the Headquarters Air Force Material Command Director of International Affairs, reporting to the commander of Air Force Material Command. In these roles, AFSAC works directly with the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center and the other Air Force Material Command centers, as well as working across the entire Department of Defense Foreign Military Sales Enterprise. We directly support all the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Space Force program executive officers, as well as the F-35 Joint Program Office to broker the deal with our partner nations. We serve as the Defense Security Cooperation Agency, or DSCA, Foreign Military Sales Implementing Agency for all PEOs across the Department of the Air Force. Within the Department of the Air Force, we represent one of three DSCA implementing agencies, along with the Secretary of the Air Force's International Affairs Staff at the Pentagon and the Air Force Security Assistance Training Squadron at Randolph Air Force Base, Texas. We also work with the combatant commands, worldwide security cooperation offices, NATO nations and agencies, U.S. Embassy staffs, and the Department of State. Foreign military sales represents a major contributor to the U.S. defense industrial base, with AFSAC's total active case portfolio surging to $285 billion, representing a 32% increase over the past three years. Annual sales, shown by the bars on this chart, vary from year to year, but increase significantly to $27.1 billion in FY22, $28.3 billion in FY23, and $46.2 billion so far in FY24 as a ripple effect from the Ukraine conflict. In FY22, our F-35 sales actually exceeded all other sales that year, so we began breaking out F-35 sales, as shown by the green bar on the chart, with the blue bar representing all other sales. With this year's sales skyrocketing to $46 billion, with another $10 billion already offered to partner nations, this year's sales are the highest in AFSAC's 46-year history. The shaded area of this chart represents undelivered case value, what we consider work in progress. As you can see, work in progress grows year over year, and for the five years from FY19 through FY23, it has grown approximately 7% per year. To put all this in perspective, if you look at AFSAC's sales this year, which have reached $46 billion, AFSAC would rank number 95 as a Fortune 500 company, besting Coca-Cola, currently sitting at 95, and will soon pass American Insurance Group, currently sitting at 94. The reality remains our foreign military sales portfolio contributes in a major way to the U.S. defense industrial base, and it's growing. We find ourselves today in an increasingly more dynamic and competitive global security market. The decisions you make in industry are critical to the U.S. competitive position. Product design and development considerations, defense exportability features, and modular open systems architecture are key to our market position. Ukraine remains a game changer, as reflected in increased sales since the conflict started. The Ukraine conflict also shows national values matter across the globe, and relationships are at the heart of what the U.S. and its allies and partners do. The Israel-Hamas conflict tested our foreign military sales enterprise, showing we can in fact respond with urgency. It also reinforced the importance of strong, pre-existing relationships 
and highlighted in a major way the importance of being able to sustain our legacy platforms, a topic at the top of mind for all our partner nations. The global security market also reflects the changing face of foreign military sales, starting with the U.S. Space Force. AFSAC serves as the Foreign Military Sales Implementing Agency for the U.S. Space Force, working with Space Systems Command's International Affairs Office and through U.S. Space Force's six program executive officers. All are under the Space Systems Command, which serves as the U.S. Space Force's Acquisition Command. The U.S. Space Force Foreign Military Sales Portfolio right now sits at approximately $650 million but it is growing at a rapid clip of about 25 to 30% a year. Current sales are predominantly military communication and position navigation and timing sales, like the integration of GPS systems. But looking forward, space domain awareness and combat power systems have potential for becoming a larger portion of future sales. Additionally, efforts are underway to lower the classification of certain space systems, potentially leading to even more explosive growth for the Space Foreign Military Sales portfolio, to a point where U.S. Space Force Foreign Military Sales could be a game changer. The addition of the U.S. Space Force is significant, but changes on the U.S. Air Force side also contribute to the changing face of foreign military sales. Foreign military sales is much more than just existing U.S. Air Force aircraft. It extends to extensive weapon system development programs, fourth and fifth generation plus capabilities, while at the same time our technology release process becomes more complicated. The days of FMS predominantly being excess defense articles are gone and now rely heavily on ensuring we provide our partners a total package approach. AFSAC has seen a dramatic increase in non-program of record capabilities which stresses our entire Department of the Air Force acquisition enterprise and highlights the importance of weapons integration and airworthiness. The result means our partner nations want more comprehensive price and availability feedback to support competitive weapon system selection. And in many cases, they want it in record time or possibly in multi multiple iterations. Delivery speed and partner customization has become increasingly more important across all of the work we perform. And our partners want and have the capability and capacity to be producers. Including our Army and Navy counterparts, FMS sales should exceed $100 billion this year, placing its purchasing power on par with the Department of Defense. With all these challenges discussed today, the Department of Defense continues to improve the foreign military sales capabilities across the board and over the past year stood up a Department of Defense foreign military sales tiger team to look at all of our processes. The Secretary of Defense recently directed the Department of Defense to implement the six initiatives shown in this chart. I want to focus on number five, expand defense industrial base capacity. At the core of this initiative is an effort to reduce production timelines. First, we want to incorporate ally and partner requirements into ongoing efforts to expand the U.S. defense industrial base production capacity. Next, we want to develop a comprehensive strategy to incentivize defense industrial based investment and build a surge capability for those high demand, low supply systems. We also want to use multi-year contracts, enhance use of the DSCA Special Defense Acquisition Fund, develop a five-year predictive analysis of partner demand, and ensure sustained engagement in the U.S. defense industrial base. One area worth highlighting, AFSAC manages a contract for the Parts and Repair Order System, better known as PROS, which provides a non-standard source for supplies and an opportunity for industry to join PROS as a provider and bid on partner nation sustainment demands. If you have the ability to produce non-standard parts, please take the time to introduce yourself during the life cycle industry days. This is vital because the number one concern I hear from every partner nation as I travel around the world is the need to sustain legacy weapon systems. At the core of that issue is our U.S. defense industrial base and its production capacity, 
or lack of capacity. A perfect example of this is the cartridge and propellant actuated devices, or CAD-PAD, used on aircraft. There's a significant shortage across the enterprise, including with our U.S. Air Force and partner nations. Another example is with aircraft engines. The shortage of parts reflected in our limited production capacity represents a real challenge to readiness. So same offer. If you have ability to produce these parts, please introduce yourself during the life cycle industry days. We need support from our industry partners along the entire process, starting with a mindset to design, produce, and plan for exportability. Above all, we need early planning for production capacity to support sustainment and innovative solutions to support our partner nation legacy fleets. Again, it's the number one concern for all partner nations. Our partner nations continue to employ weapon systems either no longer in use by the U.S. Air Force, like the F-4, F-5, or C-47, or weapon systems never used in the U.S. Air Force, like the A-29 light attack aircraft and various intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or ISR aircraft. We must continue providing sustainment support to these weapon systems through pros or other innovative ways. We must align strategic messaging across the U.S. Department of Defense and the Defense Industrial Base, under promise and over deliver during pre-LOA and case development, stick to realistic production schedules, and focus on sustainment planning for long-term results. Finally, we must all keep our promises and fulfill all commitments. Timely and realistic industry estimates ensure we can meet customer expectations for price and availability. And in the end, we need on time, on cost production and delivery, and above all, robust long-term sustainment. Thank you for listening today. The entire AFSAC team looks forward to seeing you during the Air Force Lifecycle Management Center's Lifecycle Industry Days.